Okay, so we're continuing with the special angles uh, handout. So for example 3, I'm told cos theta equals negative 2 over 3, and theta lies in quadrant 2. Now, this question, to be honest with you, is exactly the same as something you did in grade 11. Uh, because we don't even care for what theta is. We're just trying to solve for the other five ratios. So it doesn't matter if we express theta in radians or in degrees, we have the cosine ratio. So finding the sine ratio uh, is just like what we did beforehand. So what you need to remember is cos theta is defined as x over r. So you have x and you have r. So x must be negative 2 because the radius of the circle cannot be negative. And it makes sense that x is negative because we, we say that theta lies in quadrant 2. So what we're missing here is y. We have x, we have r, but we don't have y. Well, without y, that's a big problem because I can't tell you what sine theta is. I can't tell you what tan theta is or cosecant or cotan. The only thing I can tell you right now is actually secant because secant theta is reciprocal of cos theta. So of the five, I can right off the bat, I can tell you secant theta is negative 3 over 2. <laughs> but you know what? I don't know the other, the four remaining trig ratios. So what we need to do is use the definition of a circle. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. If I know what x squared and y squared, or if I know uh, x and r, I can solve for y. So x, if you do the math, is negative 2, or if you look at the ratio. And r is 3, so let's solve for y. Okay, so if you do the math, you get y is equal to plus root 5 or minus root 5. Please don't assume, well, there's two common mistakes that kids make. First mistake is you don't put the plus minus. Okay, when you square both sides, you should get y to be positive root 5 or negative root 5. The second mistake is that if they do write the plus minus, that they always reject the minus, because for whatever reason, we hate negative answers. Okay. You cannot assume that it's always going to be plus root 5. Now, in this case, we do reject the negative, okay? That's not always the case. The only reason we're rejecting the negative root, the negative root 5, is because we're told that theta lies in the second quadrant. If you're in the second quadrant, how about we draw it out here? If you're in the second quadrant, the y-coordinate must be positive. So because theta is in quadrant 2, theta is in quadrant 2. That's the only reason we're rejecting negative root 5. So what else do we know? So, oh, so now we know why we can solve for the other five ratios. So secant theta equals negative root 3 over 2, sine theta equals negative, oh sorry, root 5 over 3, cosecant theta equals, uh, I'm going to rationalize the denominator in one step, so 3 root 5 over 5. Uh, I'll show you how I got that. So you would have written 3 over root 5 if you rationalize the denominator. Oops. If you rationalize the denominator, you'll get 3 root 5 over 5. Okay, so that's how I got 3 root 5 over 5. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, what's missing? Oh, yes, tan theta. Tan theta is root 5, because y over x, so root 5 over 2, and it's negative. Cotan theta equals, oh, the reciprocal. So it's negative 2 root 5 over 5. You can rationalize the denominator yourself, but it is negative 2 root 5 over 5. All right, but to be honest with you, there's nothing special about this question. You, the math and the logic is exactly the same as grade 11. 
So next one, tan theta equals negative root three over three. Once again, this question is exactly the same as what you did in grade 11. I really want to keep harping on that because I want you to just remember the logic. The math is the same as before. So the only thing that makes this question a grade 12 question is the restriction that we've placed here. Theta is between zero and two pi. What you saw last year was zero degrees and 360 degrees. So there's only one, one small change. So all we have to do is is we have to express the angles in radians as opposed to degrees. Now, because the ratio is root three over three, we're expecting exact values, okay? So when you see root three over three, that should come to you right away. Okay, they tell me that tan theta is negative root three over three. So I'm gonna draw two diagrams because theta could either be in the second quadrant or it could be in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so theta could be in the second quadrant or the fourth quadrant because they told me the ratio is negative. Now, to find out the reference angle, the reference angle, I look at the magnitude of the ratio, root three over three. If the magnitude of the ratio is root three over three, the reference angle must be, you have three choices essentially, pi over three, pi over four, pi over six. But if you remember the table, it should be pi over six, pi over six. So theta is equal to, for the second quadrant angle, it's pi, let's write the, write it as pi minus reference angle. Now since the reference angle is pi over six, you'll know that the principal angle is five pi over six. Uh, the second, the fourth quadrant angle would be two pi minus the reference angle. And like I said, the reference angle is pi over six, so you'll get 11 pi over six. So there are two answers here. Theta could be five pi over six, or it could be 11 pi over six. Now I do wanna mention that there are actually an infinite number of answers. For this uh for theta there are an infinite number of answers for theta but unfortunately we have to reject quite a few of them because of this restriction zero to two pi now if that restriction on theta was not there how do you find the the infinite solutions okay, wh wh where are all these other answers coming from so let's take a look at five pi over six for example how do I get the other answers? How do I generate a ratio of negative root three over three? Well, if you think about it, all I have to do is maintain the terminal arm in the exact same location. How do I maintain the terminal arm in the exact same location? So you take five pi over six and you have two options. You can rotate this terminal arm clockwise this is counterclockwise, counterclockwise, or you can spin it clockwise. Okay, it doesn't matter. So if you rotate it counterclockwise, all you have to do is take five pi over six and add it by two pi. And you keep adding by multiples of two pi. Alternatively, you could subtract by a multiple of two pi. But as long as you add or subtract by a multiple of two pi, then you'll maintain this ratio of negative root three over three. And the same thing could be said for 11 pi over six. So in grade 11, hopefully you remember this, this is the, the angles I'm, I'm talking about are called coterminal angles. So if you add and subtract by multiples of two pi, you're generating coterminal angles. And the ratios are all the same when you're working with coterminal angles. So because there's a restriction, I, I only have two answers, but be careful because if the question didn't have these restrictions, then you have to state all the infinite solutions that exist. All right, let's work with the last question here. Rachel's flying her kite at the end of a 50 meter string. The sun is directly overhead and the string makes an angle of pi over six with the ground. The wind speed increases and the kite flies higher until the string makes an angle of pi over three with the ground. Uh, determine an exact expression for the horizontal distance that a shadow of the kite moves between the two positions of the kite. Okay, so let's draw two diagrams here. 
Um, in the very beginning, you have a 50 meter string and it's pi over 6. The angle with the ground is pi over 6. Uh, my diagram is actually not very good. Uh, it's a little, little angle looks a little charged. I'm going to shrink it a little. Perfect. Okay, pi over 6. And then the wind picks up. It's a windy day, so the angle, the size of the angle, increases. So it goes from pi over 6 to pi over 3. So let's say the horizontal distance here is x sub 1, and the horizontal distance here is x sub 2. So I'm going to use the cosine ratio to solve for x sub 1 as well as x sub 2 because it's adjacent over hypotenuse. So cos of pi over 6 is equal to x sub 1 over 50. So x sub 1 is equal to 50 cos pi over 6. X sub 2 is going to be cos pi over 3 equals x sub 2 over 50. So x sub 2 is 50 cos pi over 3. Let's simplify it here. I was going to simplify it later, but we'll do it right now. So x sub 1 pi over 6 cos pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. So that's 25 root 3 x sub 2 is 50 times half, because cos pi over 3 is half, and that's going to be 25. So therefore, the horizontal distance that the shadow, that the shadow moves is 25 root 3 minus 25. So it goes from, so the difference between x sub 1 and x sub 2 will be the, the distance which the shadow moves.